Hello there, this is Retro Spirits Garden, and we're looking at Star Wars Rogue Squadron on the N64. Uh, there's an X-Wing. Oh, there's Luke Skywalker. Oh, it's Star Wars. In Japanese, there's R2-D2 being loaded into the X-Wing's anus. As I live and breathe, this is a 3D shoot up on the N64, featuring crazy graphics and uh, in high res. That's why they're crazy. Uh, several missions can appear via the use of stills from the game um, pushed into your face via photons from your monitor. Uh, this review is going well so far, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, it's a 3D shooting game for crying out loud featuring Star Wars characters and Star Wars vehicles and vehicles and um, you know what? It's pretty pretty okay. Um, you've got a choice of uh, an X-Wing, an A-Wing, and some other made-up spacecraft there. Oh, I just saw the old Naboo, Naboo Starfire. Um, so before we get into the game, you have a hangar, which you can uh, glide around like a disembodied force ghost um, and listen to a very American man talk nonsense about fictional aircraft which is, as you will agree, an exciting prospect for every N64 owner. Um, I do like the old uh, design of the A-Wing there. It's quite uh, quite a cool little spaceship, isn't it? Looks a bit like the old uh, Vic Viper from uh, Gradius. Um, there's the classic X-Wing with R2-D2 made out of at least eight polygons. Uh, this bit's always a bit odd in the old uh, N64 version bit robotic in the old animation department here. Oh look, there's a dude moonwalking across the hangar bay. Uh, the spaceship then takes a left turn and hits an invisible wall by the looks of it. Uh, this is the Star Wars logo uh, you, as you're falling away from it into a large pit. Um, it's got all the uh, all the presentation you want. Um, Star Wars based presentation. Looks like you've got a Japanese uh, translation so it's in, uh, I believe that's English, that that uh, language being displayed there, uh, the rebel opposition. Uh, yes, that language displayed there is English, and the Japanese at the top is um, translating it so people in Japan can read it, because this is a Japanese version of the game running on a uh, Japanese console. And as such, um, it will run at the full a refresh rate than it's supposed to, not like the PAL version, which I remember back in the day was slightly ropey in the old frame rate department. But hey, we've got ourselves uh, three or four frames a second back by playing the import version. It's all important when it comes to these retro games. Um, so you take uh, part in this game as Luke Skywalker, um, the miserable curmudgeon Luke Skywalker, as he now is, based on the last three Star Wars movies. Um, just a miserable old man now, isn't he? But back in these days, he was uh, full of vim and vigour. Um, another slightly ropey cutscene. Let's get into the game at some point, please. Um, the odd thing about this game, and there's a few odd things about this game, but the main odd thing is that a lot of these missions, if not all of them, take place over planet surfaces. Now, in the movies, there are very few uh, instances I can think of where an X-Wing flies and attacks things over a planet surface rather than in space. Um, apart from that old, uh, the old Rogue One movie with that woman in it, who's, um, dad invented the Death Star, he, um, he made it in his garage, uh, a bit like Robot Wars, out of an old, uh, lawnmower and, uh, bouncer. He didn't do that. Um, yeah, they attack, they attack some installation there in x wings don't they? But in this game, every single mission, you will, as far as I remember, play it over a planet surface. Fairly odd. And the planet surfaces in this game, um, are all height map based, slightly low polygon, and um, 
not textured that impressively but it does have a Star Warsy feel I like the sound effects they're all groovy uh, the controls on your X-Wing are a bit elasticated um, you kind of uh, hit a bit of a wall when turning left or right and then the, your fighter pings back um, unresponsively so that's nice and here I'm just shooting innocent droids out for a walk all they're doing is uh, they're droiding, that's what they do, they droid all day um, their whole reason for existing is to uh, terrify the local inhabitants and uh, they're just doing what they're paid or made to do I believe there's a Sarlacc pit directly below there which I didn't look at so there's a few uh, cool details in this uh, I think the crate dragon bones are in here or something is that all of my remembering from Rogue Squadron 2? Anyway, there's a sample there, look. Oh, Star Wars stuff. I think I'm getting a full-on chubster. I'm not. It's Star Wars. Um, it's not that exciting anymore, isn't it? Because they, uh, they've ruined the franchise with the new movies. Oh, look, there's a, like a, why, uh, what are they called? Like a training uh, spaceship. Luke's, Luke's little training spaceship in the background. Um, this game is incredibly difficult. Uh, it's unfair on the later levels. Uh, some of the missions start you off in front of uh, rocket towers, which propel rockets towards your face at incredible speed. And um, before you've even had a chance to react, they'll have locked onto you and shot a missile up your chuff. Um, so that's not pleasant. There's like a land speeder there. Oh man, for the Star Wars fanboy. Uh, of a certain age, uh, this uh, this is this is chub making. This is uh, pornography. Um, look at that tie bombers. Oh, Mos Eisley is looking a little uh, looking a little anemic in terms of uh, the amount of buildings. And also, I don't see any kind of um, dinosaurs and stuff that they added to the uh, special edition of the original movie. Um, according to Lucas, this should be filled with uh, dinosaurs of some description. But all I can see is boxy buildings. So if you're going to play one of these games, um, and you've got a GameCube, buy that one, because that one has got a better frame rate and slightly better controls, and it looks uh, glorious. If you've only got an N64, uh, this is fine. It's alright. It's dirt cheap. I think I paid 12 quid for this um, on the old uh, Japanese version. The US version might set you back a bit more because uh, the old uh, US version hasn't got all the Japanese text in it. Um, the PAL version, I don't know how much that is, but the frame rate is piss poor in the PAL version. You stick the high res pack in, and I'm using the high res pack here, and I'm baffled as to why this game uh, will capture in high res. Uh, considering a lot of my other games don't. Um, yeah, the framework chugs like buggery. But this looks this looks okay. Some of the later levels, when you get the Atats walking around, they slow down a bit. Oh, I've got a silver medal. Oh, I love medals, me. I'm like uh, Mutley. Uh, there's a reference for the older generation right there. There's some screenshots there, look, of people wearing costumes in a movie set. Ah, oh, chubby! There's another mission set on the planet's surface with your spaceship, and another mission set on the planet's surface for your spaceship. That one's set on a planet's surface uh, for your spaceship. I think that one's um, Corellia. That's Han Solo's home planet, isn't it? Hey, nerds! Um, yeah, this game is for people who like uh, hard to handle shoot em ups and science fiction nerds and it hits those two beats perfectly. Um, yeah, there's not a huge amount more to say about it apart from it's probably worth a punt at 12 quid. It's really difficult later on and um, like I said there's a volcano planet which you go to and uh, it literally spawns your X-wing or whatever it is that you're flying at that point in front of like homing missile turrets. Uh, it's just annoying. Oh look, there's the uh, episode one spaceship. So let's just um, let's just halt halt the review, uh, such as it is. Not really much of a review, and just let's just bask in some graphics here. 
and uh, just describe what's happening on screen. Oh, I do like the snow speeder. We get some box shaped uh, laser cannons. These models and textures actually look pretty nice. Um, and it's nice and high res, nice and dapper. It's kind of, it's like it's come to the party well equipped with the uh, visuals this game. Um, because up to a certain date, oh, he's gone right and he's hit the uh, hit the uh, skybox. Oh, I'm falling down a hole again. Um, up to a certain point, this was probably one of the best looking Star Wars games out, not including the PC Star Wars games at this point. Uh, this what this came out in sort of 90, 97, 98 ish, and at that point we'd had Tie Fighter on the PC and X Wing on the PC, and uh, they weren't even textured, were they? I don't know. But this, oh, this has got textures on it, and it's got uh, an Imperial shot. Oh man! I don't know how much more of this I can take. It's Star Wars. Um. I used to love Star Wars, I don't love Star Wars anymore. Star Wars has uh, been ruined by J.J. Uh, Abrams and his crew. Um, adding nonsense. I think you've got to protect this convoy of uh, space cars against the um, space chickens. Take that, you space chicken. It's got some, uh, some lighting effects here, look. Some vertex lighting, real time. Um, expect to see that in the Army 64. Uh, the damage that you receive from some of these vehicles um, doesn't seem consistent and I will say that that is a slight issue. Um, sometimes it feels like you can take an absolute pounding before um, exploding. Uh, other times it barely has to touch you and you've exploded all over the screen. Um, that sounded more sexual than I wanted it to. I don't take it back though. I'm gonna let that lie. Uh, you have to shoot the gun turrets here. Um, Death Star gun turrets hidden in the mountains. Uh, there's a uh, blue shield thing. Uh, you can collect um, icons from the uh, surrounding things that you destroy, from what I remember, and they do certain things like upgrade your weapons for future use, but um, I haven't uncovered any of them so far, so that was worthwhile mentioning, wasn't it? The box art for this game, uh, the Japanese version at least, is horrendous. Um, here's, a, here's a missile tower, so it fires like homing missiles at you, and uh, you start a few levels directly in front of some of these bad boys and they're a pain in the ass. Oh, someone just shot me the missile at the ass. Unbelievable. Oh, look, there's another one, see? Look, there's loads of them. Oh my god, they're everywhere. On the old uh, sequel, on the old GameCube, you could send your wingman to go and uh, destroy turrets and stuff. On here, uh, the AI... Oh. I just wanted to say hello. I just wanted to make friends. <laughs> and you got to blow me up. Um, on here, the uh, wingman just seems to kind of fly around ineffectually. I'm sure they do something. What that is, though, I don't know. I've got a feeling I've got to destroy that. You can see on your radar, you've got um, some things in red. And uh, shoot the things in red for victory. And that is all you need to do. Um, there's another freaking missile launching bloody turret thing on the top there. Your space car is a bit badly designed, isn't it? It's just like a, it's like a breeze block with a Dorito on top of it, which is nice. Okay, I'm off. See you later, boys. Oh no, I've got something else to do. Uh, weird cutscene. Um, taking me taking me out of the, uh, the movie-like game. The visuals. It's like I'm immersed in a real Star Wars world. Look, look at the gun turrets. There's thousands of them. Oh, you've got uh, secondary missiles to fire as well. I always forget about the old secondary missiles. Um, of which I've got two left now. Uh, they are quite handy. Um, not quite sure what I'm doing here. Just having a bit of a skim over the planet's surface. You know, like they famously do in all of the Star Wars movies. In an X-Wing. Uh, odd. Oh. Nope, crashed into it. Okay. 
shooting him with my powerful lasers wasn't enough to destroy him and crashed into a TIE fighter. What are the chances of that? Yeah, I've got to protect my uh, breeze block cars from uh, the breeze block chicken men. And um, the star field in the sky is a bit regular, isn't it? Uh, yeah, very odd. Don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Probably got to shoot the TIE fighters. This is where having an English uh, version would help you, I'm guessing. But still, you can get through it. A little bit of perseverance. Uh, I was going to say, how's your father? But that's something completely different, isn't it? My brain has gone all weird today. Must be, um, must be this uh, lock-in thing. It's the first video I've done for several weeks after being locked in, and my brain is just spouting nonsense. Oh, it's nice to have an outlet, though. Thanks, YouTube. Um, do I recommend this game? Uh, do you know what? I think I'll probably do the N64. It's nowhere near as good as Rogue uh, Squadron 2 on the GameCube. Um, there is another N64 game by the same people, um, featuring Star Wars. I think it's called something like uh, Battle for Naboo or something. And um, I don't know what that's like. That's supposedly okay, I think. Uh, rarer than this, I would say. I've never seen a copy of it. Um, it's certainly not an import copy anyway. Uh, but yeah, what you get for your money here is get a bit of an authentic Star Wars look. A bit of a weird kind of um, MIDI Star Wars sound. It's not obviously not sampled from the film, it's kind of played through a, a Casio keyboard of some description. There's a man holding two giant chuppa chups. Oh man, he's, he must be, he must be he's like shaft for chuppa chups. Everybody loves him. Come and lick my chuppers. He screams at the top of his voice. Never. Um, yeah, so I kind of recommend this, I think, for 12 quid. It's an alright game. Um, if my absolute drivel and nonsense hasn't put you off so far. I do like this this uh, hanger thing. Looks looks very swish. Even if you have got... Uh, Dudes in orange suits moonwalking uh, all over the place. I don't know how you unlock the Naboo spacecraft. It's just sitting there, though, for some reason. Don't know why. You can unlock uh, the Millennium Falcon as a playable. And I believe you can do that in the sequel, too. But you can also unlock Slave 1 in one of these games. I don't know. Can't remember. It's been so long since I completed any of them. Uh, so start the old bit of chuggy frame right there. Star Wars games in the N64, are all, they're all pretty decent. And I wouldn't say any of them were killer, apart from maybe Episode One. That's that's probably the best one. Episode One Racer. Um, so episode One Racer. You've got the Battle for Naboo, which I've never played. Mike Bry. Shadows of the Empire, which is decent. And you've got this Rogue Rogue Squadron here. Which is also good fun. Um, although it can be frustrating. The old snow speeder looks groovy. Um, just trying to think if there's any more Star Wars games I can think of on the N64. I'm not sure that there are. And if I'm wrong about that, you can talk to my lawyer. Who doesn't exist. So... You'll be talking to yourself, so don't bother. Um, you used to do boring, boring things in this game, like shoot radar dishes, though, which, which you know, doesn't feel super Star Warsy. Um, but I do get to shoot some attacks in a minute, so that's that's all well and good. The textures for this canyon actually are more effective than uh, some of the previous levels. It actually doesn't look too bad. Um, but the way they generated these levels is betrayed in the fact that the uh, it all looks very samey and a bit janky. Um, I don't. Th I think they did do a bit of that actually for Rogue Squadron on the GameCube. Um, oh, I just turned around the corner and he shot me straight in the face. I'm gonna nibble his ankles. That'll learn him. Oh, 
Um. Yeah, it's uh. It's it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Can't say fair enough. Right. Taking down an at at with a snow speed is always good fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they use the uh, high map stuff so much on the GameCube one. I think Tatooine probably did, but I think a lot of the levels were kind of um, kind of more a bit more bespoke. Uh, this definitely has the uh, stink of a black and white image used to bump these polygons out, and then some sort of I'm going to get technical here. World space mapping uh, applied to the upward surfaces. Oh man, I just just took very very technical there, wasn't it beautiful? Uh, never saw a speeder uh, take out a tie fighter in the um, in the movies, but hey. That's fine, we can live with that. Oh look, there's an Imperial shot, and they're gonna take off. I'm gonna blow the crap out of him. Ah, oh, eat my laser death, you. And the oh, directly behind him is a fucking gun turret. And he shot me. And I died. And now I'm just a smear on a canyon wall. Unbelievable. That's Star Wars uh, all over, that is. See, some things, like, they seem to take ages to kill you. One rocket in the face, you're done for. Okay, well, that's my review of um, Star Wars uh, Rogue Squadron. Hopefully the next review I publish will be more coherent and less waffly, because I'll have got over the fact that I have not been out of my house for six weeks due to uh, all the viruses that we've got going around. Am I shooting people in the face there? Oh, there's an ass hat. Come on. You can take him. Oh, now I'm wobbling all over the place. I can't line up. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh, I didn't do it. And then there's a gun turret. Oh, I got the gun turret. Oh, come on. Shoot him in the back of the head. Yeah. Bit of a donkey punch. A laser-based donkey punch to that mofo. Um, oh, there's a rocket bastard there. Look. Come on, you rocket bastard. Uh, took, him out. took him out like a cheap date. What? Oh, just died. I died on an invisible... Um, there was an invisible man there, and um, I hit him, and uh, he got caught in my engine, and my engine exploded. I don't know what the hell happened there. I just exploded for no reason whatsoever. Um, slightly frustrating? Yeah, but that's... You're going to get a bit of frustrated with this game. There's no denying that. But 12 quid. And it features AT-ATs. And ATSTs. And X-Wings. Uh, what more could you ask for? Nothing. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying nothing. Yeah. Didn't like that much, did he? They did a pretty good job on this, I would say. The fidelity is quite nice. The frame rate could be smoother. Um, if we play this via emulation, you can up that. Uh, what the fuck? You can up that, and uh, it'd be a nicer experience. There's a man hugging a laser cannon. It's a man after my own heart. That's game over, and that's see you later. Ta-ra!